Greetings everyone, my name is Mrs. Baker. I'm going to go over with you today the class expectations and procedures. Please review this information carefully and if you have any questions, please contact me so that I can address them. The link for this document is also available for you to view at any time. The best way to contact me is via email. Here is my email address, kbaker at srsd.net. And you can also uh, give me a call on the phone by calling the 910 main office and leaving a voicemail message there. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. The other place to go is to my website. And there's wonderful information there for each of the classes. When you visit my website, there is a link to each of the levels that I teach. I teach Honors English 9, uh, General Level English 9, and English 12. You can navigate to each of those pages by clicking on the tab at the top of the page or by clicking on these quick links here. There's also additional information on this page. Again, my email address, directions for signing up for the Remind app. This is a wonderful tool that we will use throughout the year and it's just a way for me to deliver um, information to you and via text messages and it's all one direction. So in the event of a um, early dismissal or school closing, I can blast out a quick reminder. I can also remind you about uh, tests and quizzes and any materials that you may need to be bringing to class. There's also a link to the student technology dash dashboard and very important, the link to the acceptable use policy. When you click on each of the pages, you have an overview of the class and again, the remind instructions, various groups that you can join um, on Edmodo, a link to the class expectations document, which I will be going through in detail here in this video. And then awesome is this um, Google Calendar which you can follow the directions here to add this calendar to your own device so that it's easily accessible. You can also bookmark this page so that you can always look. Why do I like the calendar so much? Because when you click on each of these events for the date, it will give you um, the lesson plan for the day and it will tell you what my objectives are. It would also tell you the tasks that we will be completing in class. So if you are not one to go on Edmodo much, which we're gonna change that this year, always go here to check what we will be doing. Back on the class expectations document, uh, here are the list of materials we need for class, pencils, highlighter, any color, a notebook. While I prefer a three ring binder because I will always hole punch documents for you um, and for your parents to peruse and it is very important that you keep the notebook organized. You're totally allowed to share your notebook with other classes but it is very very important that you stay organized. You want to keep any handouts I give you, have a section for daily do now activities, some lined paper for notes, and then we'll talk more in detail about signing the class expectations, what the pause permission slip is, and there was a clue uh, with the picture on my website, and then class procedures and class contract. We'll talk about that more in detail at a later date. But the key is this, you want to have that notebook organized because as you'll find out, most of my tests and quizzes are open resource and you can have the answers right at your fingertips by keeping an organized notebook. Optional for this class is a personal technology device. You can choose to bring in a smartphone, iPod touch, an iPad, a tablet, anything. Um, please make sure though that you review the acceptable use policy which can be found on the Southern Regional homepage. And this information is very important to understand um, the legalities of bringing a device to school, understanding the filter system and um, security features, vandalism, etc. Please review this information. Any and all apps that we use for school um, Edmodo, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides, MP3 voice recorder, or a QR code scanner are all free. And really, what I want to do is show you how to use these devices 
for school and academic purposes, not just to play games. Now, don't worry. If you don't have your own personal device or your parents are not comfortable with bringing your expensive equipment to school, that is fine. We also have access to Chromebooks. One day a week, every Monday, we have access to Chromebooks in class. And um, probably anytime, two to three times, possibly, throughout the week additionally, we'll be able to use the Chromebooks. Now, also keep in mind too, that I foster a lot of collaborative learning and students will be working in groups very often. So again, if you don't have a device, it's not a big deal because I will pair you up with someone who does have a device. And that's really key to understand the notion of collaboration and being able to problem solve and work together as a team. That's a life skill. So continuing with our um, expectations every day our daily routine will begin with an activity a do now activity all of the do nows are located on a google slide which students can access anytime via edmodo a qr code i have pasted around the room um, any place that they can get it and the do now is just for the first five minutes of class then I usually go over objectives and instructions for the day very briefly. And then the majority of our class time is to be spent on learning activities. This is really important. I don't like to lecture because I want students to be engaged in learning. Can lectures be like this, an informational and valid activity for class time? Absolutely. But most often I want my students working and um, really engaging in the learning. And when I do lectures, they might be like this in a video. Now you can pause and rewind as often as you need, which is also nice too, because how many times in class listening to a lecture do you go, wait a second, what did he just say? Oh, I missed that. Can't you rewind it? Wait, you're going too fast. So this is a very, very valid way of learning. Um, and then the conclusion of the period is review and wrap up for about the last five minutes. Now, if you are absent and you're not in school that day, again, Students can go on Edmodo. The daily agenda is posted every single day. Here in my 2014-15 English 9 group, you can see the agenda for class today, 9-15. There is a link to the Do Now slides, and there are a set of directions for what we will be doing. Guaranteed, every single day I post this for you, so that if you are not home, you can, if you are home, and you're not able to come to school, there is no excuse because all of the resources are right there. If you can get online, you can still participate in class. Now, let's say you, know, you don't have the internet at home and you're sick, that's totally fine as well. If you are unable to work or you can't get on the internet, you can't get on Edmodo, you can always email me the work and I will send it to you as an attachment on the same day or when you finally come back to school, you can stay after and get the work or you ask your classmates for assignments. The most important thing here though is that you take responsibility for your learning and that you don't wait for someone else to tell you what to do. And it's very important also that you submit makeup work ASAP. That needs to come in as soon as possible. Now, speaking of participation, students are expected to participate in class discussions and our group activities. I also expect you to participate regularly on Edmodo. I will post numerous opportunities for you to engage in an online discussion. For example, last week for 9-11, we looked at the story of Wells, a lacrosse player from Boston. Now Wells, pretty interesting. He was the man in the red bandana. I also attach two more stories about 9-11 and ask for you to watch them and then reply. And what's really neat is we can continue the learning outside of class on your own time. And you can come back and reply anytime you want and participate in the conversation. And this is really valuable to continue your learning and your thinking outside of the classroom. So what do I expect? I expect you making a habit of participating on Edmodo at least four to five times a week. You should always be checking the group daily for any resources and additional information I share with you. You know, also know this too, I'll be online as well um, after school from about 4 p.m. till about 8 p.m. Um, as I'm 
you know, if I'm caught up with family stuff, obviously I will not be online, but I usually try to check in with Edmodo and my email um, periodically uh, in the evenings after school. Please note though that any emails or messages received after 8 p.m. will be answered the following school day. I will not be able to be online after 8 p.m. As far as grades are concerned, Grades are important, however, my teaching philosophy focuses on cultivating curiosity. I want students to be active, engaged learners. I want you to be using critical thinking skills. Um, and as long as you stay organized, you do what I ask, and you focus on the learning, the grades will take care of themselves and reflect the efforts that you make. If you choose not to do your work, well, obviously that will impact your marking period grade. So where can you go to check stuff? Regularly check Edmodo and Genesis for student assignments and grades. Edmodo is going to be our working grade book and portfolio. Um, the scores kind of provide an ongoing portfolio of formative information on student performance. Not all of the scores that are in Edmodo will get transferred to Genesis. And please note that this is about working because not everything needs to be counted as a grade. Sometimes the value in something is the learning of it. When something is counted for a grade, uh, it is based on a point system. Quarterly grades are determined by dividing the total number of points achieved by the total points possible. Homework assignments um, are 10 to 30 points per assignment. Quizzes, 10 to 80 points per quiz. Tests are 100 to 200 points per test. Essays, projects are 50 to 200. And the weighting is inherent in the point value. So the more points something is worth, the more value it has in the marking period. Now, um, I do also put in a unit deadline as far as makeup work goes because I don't want to have everything come, you know, any late work or missing work to come in too far into the marking period. So I always put a unit deadline and I will say that on such and such date, let's say November 1st. As of November 1st, everything from October must be done and completed and turned in. Anything submitted after that date will be a zero. And this is just to help me with record keeping purposes. As far as assignments go, there's two categories for them, online and paper-based. All paper-based assignments are due in class on the specified due date. That is because we will be using that piece of paper in class. Any online assignment is given a two-day window for turning in the work via Edmodo and something else we're going to be using this year, Google Classroom. For online assignments only, there is a two-day window. All assignments are due by 11.59 p.m. on that last day of the window. So let's say I have something due Wednesday. Um, I have a digital assignment due for you on Wednesday. Well, you have until 11.59 p.m. Wednesday night to turn it in. Now, do I want you staying up until midnight doing your work? Absolutely not. I would love for you to have budgeted your time ahead of time because I will never, ever do this. I will never assign a digital project due the next day. I always give you time to budget so that in the event you don't have a computer at home and we don't always have access to the Chromebooks, you can go to the 910 library and I will write you a pass, or the 1112 library, and I will write you a pass for study hall or after school. Now let's say, you know, you got your stuff done, but then, oh no, the power went out Wednesday night and you couldn't turn it in. Well, don't freak out, don't panic, don't email me, don't call me and come up with a thousand excuses. Instead, wait until the power comes back on, turn it in. If the power doesn't come back on, come into school, study hall, turn it in. I'm not going to hunt you down immediately. I'll wait. You have two days grace period to get it in. But after that second day, don't think I'm not going to have a conversation with you about your work ethic and about um, the problem that occurred and why the assignment came in late. What I want to see is this, that when you encounter a problem, that you work through it you work around it, you don't give up. So again, in the event of a computer, printer, server, power, whatever, malfunction, you can still complete the assignment. You could do it on paper. I'm not going to freak out. I will always accept a handwritten assignment because I want to see that you are always learning and not just giving up.